Hi, this is Hiroki Kuro, and welcome to Vancouver Startups YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to talk about how to get investment and this dance hall theory that I want to introduce you today. So, people who are interested in getting funding, or if you're wanting to start a startup, this will be important information. So, please stick to the end. Today, I'm going to talk about how to get funding and how to increase your possibility of successfully getting funding. So, this is not my know how or theory. This was introduced by Adam Grease. He's a serial entrepreneur. And I was fortunate enough to be in a conference where he had a panel discussion talking about how to get funding. So, I was actually his interpreter and I translated what he said. And there was one point that was very important that I learned from what he said, and I want to share it with you. So, when you're getting funding, you should kind of flip it on to the investor's side. How the investors see you and what they're thinking. There are a lot of books around investors, so if you're not familiar with how VCs work or what investors think when they're investing, you should read a few books before you go to VCs or investors. So there's one book that I recommend. Uh, it's called Venture Deals, uh, Be Smarter Than Your Lawyer and Venture Capitalist. Uh, this is a really good book. I think it's been sold for a very long time. But if you're new to this world and you don't know what venture capitalists are and what they do and how their structure are, this is, this is a great book. So have a look. So Adam is a serial entrepreneur. He's well experienced in the startup world. So his advice when you go funding is get really prepared. And what he said was really interesting is that as a VC or investor, it's really tough to be the first one to get involved. I, I recall he explained this in a dance floor uh, example. So, in a dance floor, in a dance hall, it's really hard to ask somebody to dance if there's nobody else dancing in that hall or floor. It's really hard to be that first mover. It's easy to follow. If there's only already so many people dancing in that hall or floor, it's easy to join. So this goes same with investment. If there are no investors already there, you kind of hesitate. It's up to you making that decision. So psychologically, if there are other very well-known investors or VCs already uh, committed to that round, you can kind of say, okay, if they're making that decision, this deal should be good. Of course, they'll do their due diligence and all that, but they'll be more interested in this deal. The dance hall theory uh, tells you that before you ask VCs and you start you know, creating your round, you need to do a pre-round. So you would have communications with VCs investors and say, I'm thinking of making this product. Would you be interested if we were going to raise a round of funding? And get some consensus or understanding of whether that person or that VC is interested. He, she seems to be interested. You can get a certain level of commitment saying, okay, would you be interested if I start that round? So before you get funding, uh, what you should do is doing some sounding. You go to VCs, you would build a relationship with them and then ask, I'm planning to do funding uh, like three months from now. Would you be interested if I would do fundraising? This is not an official round yet. So you're kind of sensing uh, whether that person is interested or not. And that, if that person says no, like actually, and then you should ask like why, like what am I missing? What do I need to further build or prepare uh, to get you interested? Once you get a few or one person uh, one like VC interested, you have somebody who's already dancing on that floor. If you go and start your official round, you can say, well, actually, I already have VC A who's interested in funding this much amount. So we're going to do a, let's say, three million round, uh, but we already have like one million uh, ready. So only two million or so left. We'll give the VC understanding that this startup or this project is very interesting, at least for one uh, VC, 
and that there's the possibility of this round to succeed is higher than having no VC there. Kind of recapping, um, if you're getting funding, you should build relationships before you go into the fundraising round. You should start talking to uh, investors and see what they're interested in and how they're doing in their investment, uh, how much space within their funding they still have, uh, whether they're interested in your project or not. If there are things that are missing, they will point it out and you can improve and brush up and be prepared for that official round. Thank you for watching this video to the very end. Uh, I hope this information was useful and helpful for you. Uh, I'll be posting more videos around uh, startups and tips and lessons that I learned as a startup founder and also information around Vancouver startups. So please, if you're interested, uh, subscribe to this channel and give a like uh, to this video if this was any use to you. Uh, so see you again till next time. Bye. So hope to see you again. Bye. Next video. Uh, bye.